The good thing to remember for people when they're going to the gym is that, you know, everything in the gym, even yourself, your body can be a tool. So you have to apply the things that you're doing to improve your physical ability to the things that you want to do in your life. So if I'm building a house and I have absolutely no desire to put in a ground pool, then why am I going to hire someone to dig a giant hole in my backyard? You can get absolutely shredded eating any kind of diet, you moderate and manage your macros properly, but that doesn't mean you're getting nutrition. And that's one of the biggest things that I try to tell people is macros are not nutrition. And particularly for bodybuilders, your focus from a performance perspective is so much on the macros. You have to try and maximize the nutrition impact while you're doing that. And when you're doing it with a ton of carbs, the more carbs you get, the more fuel dense your food is, the less nutritious your food is. So you're getting less nutrition. So you wonder why everything's all screwed up. It's because you're not getting any food. You, your body's got nothing to work with because you're thinking of everything in a, am I burning it or not? Not is my body able to use this for all the things it needs to do. The really cool thing about this, that anybody watching this video, I want you to take away from this. Most of the people that follow me and most of the people that follow my, my content are in the process of getting healthy. So they're looking at me when they're like, well, this doesn't apply to me because these guys are already in shape, blah, 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 blah. And that could be further from the truth. What I want everyone to understand is the principles that you followed in order to perform better on stage are the same principles that someone needs to follow when they're trying to fix their metabolic dysfunction, right? It's about nutrient density. It's about bioavailability. It's about satiety. It's about getting the quality, not the quantity and doing what's best for your long-term life and quality of life and sustainability. You're only on stage for 10 minutes, right. right? You've still got the rest of your life to live. So the choices you make are trying to get you the best shape possible for those 10 minutes, but you still got to figure out how to sustain continuing to do that, but then also being able to play with your kids and eventually your grandkids and everything else. So that's part of the equation. So it doesn't matter if you're a bodybuilder, it doesn't matter if you're hundred pounds overweight, the principles of what we're applying are the exact same thing. They just are, you just use them differently based on where you are. I, it's, it's crazy sometimes when I have conversations with people, I have to, when I tell them, you know, you don't have to do so much cardio and it's almost like I'm taking something away. It's like, it's like, I'm trying to take their toy from them. Like, but I want my cardio, but then they're the same people who are like, I hate running. I hate this. I hate that. Why do I got to spend so much time doing this? It's like, you don't, I just told you, you don't have to do that. It, there's such a mind screw going on with people when it comes to cardio. That's the aspect of the cardio as the solution. Mm -hmm. And when we say cardio is great for fat loss, I'll caveat that with cardio is great for fat loss in the short term and while only while you consistently do it. If you stop doing it, it's going to stop mm -hmm. and you can keep doing it. But the problem is you're going to work yourself to a point of super efficiency where if you, even when you're doing it, your body's going to think you're not doing it and you're going to start gaining fat again. So it's, it's, it's a point of no, it's a, it's a diminishing return. You just have to keep going longer and longer and longer in order for your body to do, to do, to do what you want it to do. I call cardio simulated healthy metabolism because you're doing an activity that's acting. It's telling your body, these are the things I want you to do as if you were active, but if you just built muscle it would do those same things, whether you're doing something or not. Yeah. So if you build muscle, you don't have to do cardio. If you build muscle and improve function and do all the things that it takes, just the activity of building muscle is going to help in that process as well. So there's a lot, a lot of factors that go into uh, cardio can be a tool and it does help with the functional aspect of you should be able to do things and build endurance. You should have endurance to do activities. But that's a, a fraction of all the other things you should have as well. And it shouldn't be the focus of what you're training. I swear I get on a step master or stair mill and it's like, okay, I've been on here, been on here, been on here. I know I've been on there for 20 minutes. And then I look down and it's like four and a half minutes. I'm like, yeah, podcast, get a, watch a movie, something. You got to just completely take your mind off the fact that you're doing this to yourself. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. I call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there 
on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. Your body, your central nervous system. And that's another, that's part of the aspect of metabolism that I like people to understand is that it's not how we burn fuel. If someone Googles metabolism, half of the definitions for metabolism are going to be how your body burns fuel to function, right? Stuff like yeah. that. And that's the kind of the wording that goes into it. When it's really, if you do want the actual definition of metabolism is all of the chemical processes of the body, which literally means every single function of your body. So it has nothing to do with the amount of fuel that we use. It has to do with how well do the functions in our body process and make our body work. So when we're talking about muscles, we're talking about how well do those myofibers and myosin and 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 how does all that stuff work in your muscle fibers? How does your motor units work? How does your brain work? How does your digestive system work? How does your your lymphs your lymph system? I mean, there's so many. I, we could go on and on, right? Hormones and intestinal tract and cardiovascular and your gonads. I mean, your sexual health is is a part of it as well. So, I mean, there's so many different things that go into metabolism. To boil it all down to eat less, work more from a way of managing health is when you really look at it, it's really kind of idiotic. So I don't know. It, it kind of drives me nuts sometimes when people are like, you're going to slow your metabolism down, like, but it doesn't slow down or speed up. It's either working well or it's not. There's a big difference. So I want to make that clear. Deadlifting is a fantastic thing to do, but sure. when you're in that mindset of more is better, then that's definitely going to be a problem. And that goes from a volume, a weight perspective, and most frequently when that happens, then you're lifting in a compromised position. So something's definitely going to happen. Deadlift is fantastic. So what I would recommend, something to think about, if you know that you're having an issue with your lower back and you have something that's going to affect that area, do it before you fatigue anything else. So it's okay. harder for you to maintain good position. So if you're going to, if you, I would do that area first so you can feel if something's tweaking, if you're not getting in the right positioning, if you're not bracing properly, and all the other surrounding areas aren't fatigued already, knock that sucker out. You'll have a better chance of feeling if something's wrong while you're doing it and then go do everything else. That makes sense. So we're talking about closed chain, right? You're trying to keep a closed chain with the connection from your shoulders through your hips to your knees and your feet, right? So basically right. from the floor through your shoulders, you, if you're, if half of that chain is already fatigued, then it's not going to be a strong chain. I would totally do that first. That way, that whole global connection is intact while you're lifting that weight and moving that weight and it will act it should actually be easier for you to target your lats and feel that connection if you do it before you do everything else so play around with it see what happens from a squat perspective like we're talking about barbell back squats we're mm -hmm. talking about in many cases your core is going to break down before your legs do and that's where most people lose it mm -hmm. right so they can they they're like i can't lift anymore but if you put them on a leg a leg press they can they can throw on another 80 pounds you know what i mean so it's not a leg strength issue it's a it's a global connection issue mm -hmm. right it's it's that global core core connection right we call it core to extremity if you've heard that phrase before so so yeah look up core to extremity everything all power starts in the hips and what controls the hips your ability to isolate and produce force from your core out to the rest of your body to your limbs so if any of that is compromised then you'll have less power in general so what i'm talking about isn't for the isolation of the lats it's for the protection of your lower back anybody that has back issues and i'll be honest with you i would i would i would probably say 90 percent of the population if you're going to deadlift deadlift with a trap bar you don't have to deadlift with a barbell and you right. also don't have to go all the way to the floor. There's so many people that are trying to deadlift from the floor and they need to raise that that bar up two or three inches to see yeah. how they can maintain a, a proper. If anybody is interested in the different variations of deadlift, I think the Jefferson deadlift is something to take a look at. The weight will be a lot lighter. It will, it's a more of a complex move. So take your time learning how to do it, but it can be beneficial if you have any issues. And the idea, the same with the trap bar. For people with back issues who want to deadlift, who need to deadlift, most people need to deadlift. It's keeping that that weight at as close to the center of gravity of your body as possible so that you're not having to manage a shift back or forward that's going to throw additional strain on your back. So the, the, the more close to center of gravity that, that bar is going to be, the less strain on your back you're getting. The good thing to remember for people when they're going to the gym is that, you know, everything in the gym, even yourself, your body can be a tool. So you have to apply the things that you're doing to improve your physical ability 
to the things that you want to do in your life. So if you, if I'm building a house and I have absolutely no desire to put in a ground pool, then why am I going to hire someone to dig a giant hole in my backyard? That, that's not going to work. I, that's not anything that I need to do. And a lot of people are in the process of doing things right now. They're digging holes in the backyard, but they have no plan of putting in a pool. So because yeah. they're not thinking about the things that they're doing and how they actually affect their life. Uh, and they need to, in many cases, they're doing too much. They need to scale back. In a lot of cases, they're doing the wrong things. They need to ask themselves, is what I'm doing working? Because that's a phone call that I get often. I've been doing this for two years and I'm frustrated. I'm stuck. Well, maybe that thing isn't working and we need to find something else. I think if you're, if you've waited two or three years, you have a right to be frustrated because you, it's, that's a long time to be stuck. If you're stuck after three months and you can't figure out what you need to do to get going, start looking for help right then and ask for help. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community, you can meet other people, you can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.